Hey there! So, I've been working on a project for a couple of days, um, and I haven't made a YouTube video for a really long time, so I figure now's the time. Um, I ported libmicmod to run under a, an ARM Cortex-M4 processor. So, for those of you who don't know, libmicmod is a library for playing back um, module audio files. So, back in the days of the Amiga 500, uh, ProTracker, FastTracker, Milky Tracker, um, these are all tools for producing music in the module tracker format. Um, the general idea is that the file contains a few samples and then pattern data to play those samples back at regular intervals uh, and with various effects, volumes, and panning, and so on. So, uh, it allows you to produce very compact music files, uh, some in the range of you know, 5K, 10K. They can be very large as well, depending on how much fidelity you want in your samples, but generally they can also be quite small. Uh, so I ported that library, which typically runs on like a, a desktop PC, uh, to run on a little uh, STM32F4 discovery board. Um, and I use the Chibi OS as my, uh, as my operating system. So, um, yeah, I'll just get straight to the demo. Uh, you plug it in, and music will start playing immediately. So, a little bit of dub mood, which is pretty cool. Um, so, the library itself is uh, extremely memory intensive, and it likes to do a lot of dynamic memory allocation uh, for some things that could even very well be static. Um, but so be it. Um, I, apply, I patched the library a little bit to make it work. Um, one of the changes I made and I submitted upstream was um, when you attempt to use the library in mono mode to, to save yourself a channel's worth of RAM because uh, the device simply doesn't have enough, um, it still allocates memory for the right channel even though it doesn't populate it. So, you know, it's great. You, you save the CPU time necessary to render the, the second channel, but you don't save any of the memory. So I submitted a patch upstream that just basically avoids that allocation. Um, which was one simple optimization so that I cut the RAM usage down by half. Um, there are some internal buffers that um, their size is actually defined um, at the top of the C file, but then the buffer itself is dynamically allocated later. Um, so I, uh, <laughs> I reduced the size of that buffer and I found that the library still works just fine. Um, and so through some clever manipulation like that, um, I was able actually to make a library run and render uh, music as you can hear, which is pretty cool. Um, so the project took me about a day and a half. I started on a Saturday evening and finished um, last night and then today I just perfected the audio output. Um, so what I'm doing for audio output on this board is fairly simple. Um, I have a double buffered audio output, uh, so it plays from one buffer while rendering the other and then just flips back and forth. Very simple. Um, I use a PWM pin here on the discovery board uh, through a capacitor and a, a couple of resistors to filter out some of the PWM noise. Um, I could have used the audio codec that's on the discovery, but um, it's fairly complicated. Uh, you need to speak to it via I2C to configure it and then send data via I2S. Um, I figured by the time I brought the codec up, um, it would be like you know a couple days or something. Uh, so just use the PWM timer and uh, a general purpose timer to update the sample that's currently playing. Fairly simple. And when the song finishes, uh, you get this lovely tone. And then if you reset the board, um, it'll restart, which is pretty cool. So I'll bring the camera a little closer and, and give you a closer look at the hardware. So the, the hardware itself is pretty straightforward. Um, this is an STM32F4 discovery board, uh, which has an STM32F407. Um, there's 128K of RAM. There, there is 192, but 64 of it is core coupled. Um, there's an FTDI that I'm just using for some uh, serial logging. And um, on a breadboard here, I've got a capacitor um, and a potentiometer to uh, create a filter and adjust the volume level. Um, <clears throat> it works without the capacitor and the potentiometer. It, it's just extremely loud and um, you hear some of the PWM chatter. So, um, you know, in theory this could be like, a, hey, I have an STM32 on a board and uh, one pin gets me audio, which is pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just using the ST-Link debugger uh, to load uh, code. It's pretty straightforward. So the operation is actually pretty simple. Um, the device will output logs via a UART, uh, which is connected to a USB via FTDI, and audio is output via PWM. So if I start a, a TTY here, um, and then bring the microcontroller out of reset, you'll see some logs and the music will start playing. So basically it's just saying MicMod was initialized and then we're going to start playing this Anarchy Menu 10, which is a module by format. Um, so if I turn your attention to the other screen, you can see some of the source code here. So in this uh, window here, we're actually looking at some of the, uh, the binary data that's in one of the modules. Um, so what I use is a tool called XXD to take the binary file and convert it into a C, uh, C style header include. So uh, we can pick a different mod, um, <clears throat> let's see here, so I, I converted a couple, uh, we can give this one a shot, 
Um, and then in my uh, main.c I can just change, um, I've commented out all of the various loads um, just to make it a little bit easier. So let's give this one a shot. And you can hear there's that tone again when the song ends. <laughs> so we, uh, we build it, which takes a couple seconds. Um, and then we start loading the code using OpenOCD, uh, which takes another couple of seconds. <coughs> And then once that starts working, we'll hear the next song, and you'll see the logs on the serial console. And you can hear it. So that's uh, it's pretty cool. This is running in a space of 128k, uh, which is tight. Um, yeah, I'm thinking it might be fun to try this with a bigger ST part, maybe with some external RAM, I'm not sure. Um, but it would definitely allow me to get uh, more interesting modules at a higher sample rate, essentially in stereo, maybe using the high quality mixer, um, you know, it's kind of interesting. Seems like CPU time is definitely not the bottleneck here, um, especially running at uh, about 168 megahertz or, or whatever this board supports. It's fairly high frequency, so um, <clears throat> there's plenty of time to do the work that is required to render the audio. So anyway, I figured um, it's been a while since I made a YouTube video and this one's uh, pretty interactive, so um, I think it was, it was time to make a new one. Hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you next time.